So 2022 Acura MDX rolling down the road here, the A-spec in this case, and in this video, I wanna focus less on airbags and split folding seats and cargo capacity, and more on how this vehicle drives and performs in a couple of specific situations that you're not likely to see on your test drive. After an extended wintertime road test in this machine, a few key things stood out after driving the 2022 Acura MDX in extremely deep snow in a variety of low traction situations, and maybe especially while driving it in the dark. I think prospective shoppers can use some of these observations to help them make a better purchase decision, so I'll share them with you in this video, and stick around till the end where I'll be giving you a full demonstration of the MDX's fantastic headlights in action. As you watch the footage in this video, remember that my tester is rolling on a set of quality winter tires and your MDX should be too if you'll be driving in conditions like these. So let's dive in. I wanna start with the powertrain. The MDX is not turbocharged and not a hybrid and that means that it's neither the most responsive nor fuel efficient machine that you'll find like it for the money. That said, there is something I think driving enthusiasts will appreciate in the way its 3.5 liter VTEC V6 engine delivers its 290 horsepower. Specifically, a pleasing growl that steps up as the revs climb and the VTEC system gets things breathing. And second, the surging, swelling, and rising action shaped to the engine's power curve. Some competitors are more efficient and offer more effortless throttle response more of the time, but ultimately, there is considerable performance fun factor dialed into the powertrain of this machine. And if you're a driving enthusiast who appreciates the sound and feel of an all-motor V6 that does its best work when it's spinning fast, I think you'll like the setup here. Same goes for the all-wheel drive system. For 2022, the MDX runs the latest version of Acura's Super Handling All-Wheel Drive, or SHAWD. That comes complete with revised parts and software that triple the torque available to the rear axle at 100 kilometers an hour, bump rear axle launch torque up by 40%, and improve the last generation system's already snappy response time by another full third. Originally, the super handling all-wheel drive system was made by combining hardware from the Honda Prelude's Active Torque Transfer System, or ATTS and Acura's VTM4 all-wheel drive system, and since the launch of Super Handling All-Wheel Drive in 2005, it's now on its fourth generation with many improvements. So push button shifter, uh, park reverse is down on this, neutral as we press there, uh, press this once for drive and once again uh, for sport mode. This is a handy little touch that I like power and charging ports there if we need them, and if we don't, nicely hidden out of sight makes for a cleaner, tidier looking interior. And of course, a uh, wireless charging pad here for your phone. So just place the phone on there. It kind of tucks underneath this little wrist rest here. That's gonna wirelessly charge my phone. And just to show you, when we're using this uh, track pad here, we've got this nice padded rest uh, for our wrist so that we can just use our fingertips here. Makes it a little bit more comfortable to use this and uh, that's a pretty handy touch. Again, your phone just slides underneath this to wirelessly recharge. Rest your wrist there. Uh, fingertip control on the trackpad, which of course manipulates up on the uh, central screen. The slow motion footage reveals a rear axle that's participating in driving the car from the first inch of movement on snow and ice. No front wheel slippage required to engage rear axle traction. That does away with torque steer and squatting off the line. It's just point and shoot even when traction's low. From the driver's seat, that's added confidence and a more precise reaction to your throttle inputs. Your commands go directly to the road more obediently, and that gives you a driving experience that's easier to connect and work in sync with. Add in the overdriven rear axle, which enables active torque vectoring alongside that snarling engine, and you've got a machine that'll connect nicely with a driving enthusiast. With the ability to spin a single rear wheel faster than the other three, this trick rear axle help makes the MDX's handling come alive. Or when you're driving in deep snow or icy conditions with full care and caution, the super handling all-wheel drive system picks up on your vibe and works things for sure-footed grip, confident handling, and minimized driver workload as you just focus on the road ahead. A few other notes from the back roads of Northern Ontario. First, ride quality and ride comfort. On badly beaten back roads, washboard surfaces, and rough camp roads, the MDX driver is sacrificing some ride comfort for the sportier driving dynamics. 
On one hand, the suspension manages to keep noise and harshness down appreciably on most surfaces, though the ride can be sportier and more abrupt than some shoppers will like. If you can deal with a little added roughness on back road surfaces in exchange for some surprisingly spirited handling elsewhere, you'll be just fine with the compromise. The ride quality does stand up nicely to rough roads as sporty crossovers go, still the compromise is definitely noticeable. Elsewhere, after a half meter of fresh snowfall and a trip deep into the woods for the deepest snow I can find, a few other observations came to light. In this footage driving through the very deep snow, the MDX is absolutely struggling. This is nearly bumper deep, very heavy snow, and the powertrain is moving the vehicle and a lot of extra weight as it plows its way down the road. But even while struggling, it stays composed. Noise levels and harshness on board are maintained at low levels, the all-wheel drive system and handling perform consistently, and the traction control system generally understands the need for extreme wheel spin to maintain momentum. Though even with the system disabled, in this situation it's definitely being limited by the electronic throttle. So my best advice if you encounter snow that's deep enough to make you second guess continuing with your drive, is to engage sport mode, turn off the traction control, keep your foot way into the throttle and let the machine do the work. While it does, you'll be comfortable and confident, seated high above the action, and allowed adequate wheel spin to keep moving, though nothing too excessive. And for further confidence, the headlights. This is something I've been consistently reporting on the latest Acura models, as it seems like they're applying some brilliant lighting tech right across the model range. The signature Acura Jewel Eye headlamps are made from these clusters of precisely arranged LED lenses, and from the driver's seat, its generous clean white light ahead and into the roadside tree lines and culverts, precise beam cutoff, a great widescreen spread of forward illumination, and a strong sense for the driver that they've got plenty of light where they need it and exceptional reach to reflective surfaces up the road. High beams engage even further reach and some additional spotlighting of the road surface in the mid-distance range. To sum that up, I think this is a lighting system that drivers can take confidence in. End of the day, though some shoppers will wish for stronger low RPM throttle response and a more comfortable ride in some situations, I think the MDX A-Spec will readily connect with a shopper after a confidence-inspiring crossover experience that's got a highly pleasing powertrain and a surprisingly athletic feel dialed into the driving experience. Thank you for watching. My name is Justin Pritchard. Until next time, take care and drive safe.